Journey to the Cross, part four, we left off where Jesus had been arrested. He was questioned by the high priest and he was denied three times by Peter. Everything is, everything seems to be collapsing. Everything seems to be on edge. Nobody really knows what's going on. They just, they just know that there's uncertainty, that there's unsettling. I like how Jesus said it best. My hour had come. Everyone wasn't sure what was about to happen, but Jesus knew this was the moment. This was the time. Sometimes in our life, we can feel like everything's going crazy. We can feel like we don't know what's about to happen, but I want us to have peace and assurance in this. God knows what he's doing. And the scripture tells us in Romans, that God works all things together for the good for them that love God and are called according to his purpose. And I believe that we love God and are called according to his purpose. I believe that we love God and are called according to his purpose. We're going to pick up where we left off. John 18 Verse 26 says, one of the high priest servants, a relative of the man whose ear Peter had cut off, that was Malchus, challenged him and said, didn't I see you with Jesus in the garden? But again, Peter denied it. This was the third time. And at that moment, a rooster began to crow. Peter denied Jesus three times, even though he said he wouldn't, even though he said, I'm with you to the end, even though he said, I'll die with you, Jesus. Peter had denied Jesus three times. Jesus was on his own. Verse 28 picks up where we really left off in the sense of the questioning. The Jewish leaders did not have the authority to execute Jesus, so they took him to Pilate, the Roman leader, as the Jews were under Roman control because their motives were to have Jesus executed. Verse 28 says, The Jewish leaders took Jesus from Caiaphas, the high priest, to the palace of the Roman governor. By now it was early morning, and to avoid ceremonial uncleanness, they did not enter the palace because they wanted to be able to eat the Passover. Wow, what incredibly legalistic Jewish leaders they were. They didn't enter into the palace because they didn't want to be ceremonially unclean and couldn't be a part of the Passover festival. These guys were so caught up on the most minute legalistic rules that they missed the entire spirit of the word. And there are people in the world who think that they're representing God's will and think that they're representing God's interests, but the reality is this, they've missed the whole message of the gospel. These Jewish leaders missed the whole purpose of Jesus. Verse 29, so Pilate came out to them and asked, what charges are you bringing against this man? Well, why are you bothering me with this guy? Why do you want him executed? What, what charges are you bringing against this man? And they said in verse 30, if he were not a criminal, they replied, we would not have handed him over to you. Oh, wow, what an incredible accusation. If he wasn't a criminal, we wouldn't have given him to you. Pilate, you can trust our reputation. You don't even need to know what he did wrong before you execute him. Just take our word for it. That's how weak their case was against Jesus. They had no case. They had no realistic charge. They had no realistic accusation. And Pilate looked at them in verse 31 and said, take him yourselves and judge him by your own law. He said, you have the right to execute justice. You, he said to them, you have the right to execute justice. You have the right to punish someone. But they didn't have one right. Verse 31. But we have no right to execute anyone, they objected. They said, we don't have the right to execute capital punishment on anyone. We, we are limited in what we can do. In verse 32 said, this took place to fulfill what Jesus had said about the kind of death he was going to die. Hearing this, verse 33, Pilate then went back inside the palace and summoned Jesus and asked him, he said, are you the king of the Jews? He looked at Jesus and he said, are you the king of the Jews? And Jesus replied, is this your own idea? Or did others talk to you about me? Is this your own idea, Pilate? Or did somebody else put you up to this? Pilate, do you really care? Are you really interested? Or are you just being manipulated by other people behind the scenes? Pilate, probably frustrated by this statement, in verse 35 said, Am I a Jew? 
Your own people and chief priests have handed you over to me. What is it you've done? What did you do, Jesus, for your own people to betray you? What did you do? If you're the king of the Jews, what did you do for your own people to give you to me? Verse 36, Jesus replied, my kingdom is not of this world. If it were, my servants would fight to prevent my arrest by the Jewish leaders. But now my kingdom is from another place. And Pilate replied, verse 37, you are a king then. And Jesus looked and answered him and said, you say that I'm a king. In fact, catch this. This reason I was born and this reason I came into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone on the side of the truth listens to me. Jesus said, I came to testify to the truth. Pilate looked at him and says that he retorted or he replied back to Jesus. It was probably sarcastic. It was probably mocking. And he said, what is truth? What is truth? Sometimes in our world, we see such a denial, such a mockery, such a such a hate towards the truth that sometimes we get confused and we don't even know what the truth is anymore. There's this statement that I heard that was so powerful. It was a question. What is truth? And does it even matter? And the world and life can so beat us down. It can so wear on us mentally, emotionally, spiritually that we can get to such a point where we say, I, I question what the truth even is. And even if I knew it, would it even matter if I really did? And here's the truth. Here's the reality. The truth does matter. And Jesus is the truth. He said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. Pilate, the truth was standing right in front of you, and you missed it. And here's the reality. In our own lives, I don't want the truth to be right in front of us and us miss it. I want us to know the truth, believe the truth, live the truth, and share the truth with a world that needs it so desperately. And Pilate says, what is truth? And with this, he went out again, verse 38, to the Jews gathered there and said, I find no basis for a charge against him. He said, this is a waste of time. There's no crime that he's committed. There's nothing that he's done wrong. But it is your custom, verse 39, for me to release you one prisoner at the time of the Passover. Do you want me to release the king of the Jews? Verse 40, and they shouted back, no, not him. Give us Barabbas. They shouted, Barabbas, give us Barabbas. We want Barabbas, not Jesus. Crucify Jesus. We want Barabbas. Barabbas, he had taken part in an uprising. He was in the Roman prison. He had been captured by the Roman leaders. And instead of wanting Jesus, who a week prior they had celebrated with palm branches when he rode into the city, now they wanted him executed and they wanted Barabbas freed. It's a picture of how oftentimes we'll reject what God has for us and choose what the world has for us. Jesus was rejected by his own people. He was rejected by his own people. He laid down his life for us, but here's the reality. We, we played a part in rejecting him. He came into the world to save us, and the world rejected its own savior. But he saved us anyways. It's a beautiful story. It's a beautiful picture about his unending love for us. And as we close down this part of the story, I, I want to share this statement with you. I was born and came into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone on the side of the truth listens to me, Jesus would say to Pilate. Everyone on this side of the truth would listen to me. You know, if we believe in the truth, if we believe in God, we need to listen to Jesus. 
so many people in this world, and I don't, I don't mean to bring this in a condemning way, I don't mean to bring this in a heavy way, but I do hope that the Holy Spirit would convict some of us about the way that we live. We want Jesus Christ as Savior, but we don't want to claim him as Lord. You see, in Luke 2, when the angel declared to the shepherds that Jesus was, had arrived, he said, born to you this day in the town of David is, is Jesus the Savior, the Messiah, the Lord. Jesus is both our Savior and our Lord. And yes, he died on the cross to save us. And yes, Jesus is the friend of sinners. Jesus is my friend. Jesus is your friend. But don't forget this. Jesus is also your Lord. All authority has been given to him. Matthew 28 tells us. He's both our Savior and our Lord. And if we believe the truth, if we're on the side of the truth, we will listen to him. This Bible, this word is the truth. It's the word of God. It was there in the beginning. Jesus put on flesh and dwelt among us. This, I say, the Bible is the manual and Jesus is the model for how to live life. It's the truth. And if you're on the side of the truth, you'll want to change to be more like the truth. I'm not saying we'll be perfect, but to be Christian means to be Christ-like. And I want to be, and I want us to be more like Christ every single day. Be blessed today.